We are week seven breathography, getting set up. I love this little setup moment. We have Dorothy, Nicole, and Adele. Thank you guys so much for being here. I love warming the body up with that yellow band. It's nice and light, but it really adequately gets the shoulder rotator cuff, those pushing muscles, and most importantly, the core as we perform our engaged exhalation. I see really, really good mechanics with everyone jumping there. Make sure that you get the pelvic movement from back to front, almost a little bit of a hip hinge, even in that first jump, just to make sure that you are um, you know, getting the glutes warmed up as you either push the hips forward into the band or even as you push, because when you push the yellow band with your hands, you're also getting a lot of glute work. Placing your balancing exercises toward the beginning of a session can be very beneficial because it activates all of those muscles that you need for balance, for stabilizing your joints, and it is one of the most neurologically challenging, and so placing it toward the beginning when you are not as fatigued, I, I generally would not put balancing exercises at the end of a session when you are fatigued. Now here, we're getting that rotation across the body, and I'm, I'm, you're standing on the near leg to make sure that you activate that glute, all the muscles that you need to stand on that leg and resist rotational force, ball between the knees, to make a better connection to the inner thighs, the pelvic floor, and the lower abs. Everyone is doing a really, really amazing job with this one. Um, thinking about the head posture, Dorothy, you can think about pushing your head back a little more, almost like you're trying to create a double chin when you're in that single leg balance. Challenging the overhead press, once again, thinking about programming, put your overhead presses toward the beginning of a session so that you aren't fatigued when you're getting the, some of the more challenging movements for the shoulders here. We're just challenging, we're actually really using this as a conditioning circuit, keeping the heart rate up as we get the, in combination with that overhead press. Everyone's doing a great job of keeping the palms facing the ears and the elbows at a 45 degree angle with this one quick cardio recovery in between the overhead presses getting now make sure that the elbows are at a 45 degree angle really nice work everyone keeping the elbows at about 45 so that you don't crunch those upper traps and that you keep the shoulders in an op optimal position right to the other side the second set of the overhead presses you'll notice that dorothy doesn't have weights for this other side and that is that is totally fine to titrate the weights um you know based on where you're at um we did do two sets in a row so it's all you know a lot of shoulder endurance there um make sure when you kick to the side dorothy that you're at a 45 degree angle behind the hip and not straight behind just to make sure we don't get over activation of the tfl with that hip abduction Okay, here we go, shoulder rotator cuff in the side plank. I like to think retract the shoulder as much as possible. That is rotator cuffing, if that's a verb. Um, that is to create as much space in front of the shoulder joint and have the rotator cuff work at optimal in optimal mechanics. Um, Sometimes I squeeze a towel between the, you know, between the biceps and the rib cage just to make sure that the humerus is not moving and it's staying nice and retracted back. Go into our push-ups with our eight beat breath retention, keeping the ab rib and loose around the waist. I like to think, make a double chin while you do push-ups. That keeps the head in an optimal position in the planks and the push-ups. Coming up for our pulling cardio to balance out those pushing muscles um, in between. So nice half kneel so we get that mobility. Um, for this one, pulling the elbows right into the middle of the rib cage, no further back. Dorothy, think lead with the back of your shoulder, not with your elbow, so that the humerus really is creating like a perpendicular line to the ground. Optimal shoulder mechanics. And I know you've had some, um, some shoulder issues there, so we will focus on that quite a bit. Um, really nice work leading with the backs of the shoulders. Taking it to the other side of that side plank. Really nice work, ladies. Um, Nicole thinking about keeping that shoulder retracted um, and only bringing the weight up to the height of the elbow, which you're doing a great job of. Adele, I think you are bringing the weight maybe even a little bit too high, um, you know, just to prevent like over rotation um, in that position. I like to bring it just up to the height of the elbow for that one. That's really, you know, all you need with that, um, you know, with that exercise, especially in that position. Getting into the push-ups again, um, always again, pretend like you're squeezing a little ball or a toilet paper tube between your chin and your chest as you do the push-ups. Dorothy, I know you're new with these, but create that double chin when you're doing your push-ups. Um, moving into the pulling, once again, um, rowing back with those switches, doing a little push-pull circuit. Excellent, excellent work. Dropping back in the heels, squeezing the shoulder blades on the way back and letting them release as you release um, the band with that one really really nice mechanics with that and just make sure that the wrists stay neutral and that they don't break as you as you are rolling back really nice work 
Okay, here come the squats, getting down and up on the chair. Excellent, excellent work, Nicole, on keeping that, that nice hip hinge, that neutral spine. Adele looks fantastic. I think that you can sit even a little bit further back on the chair, reaching, like letting the band pull the butt back to reach back a little further on the chair to get a little more work in hip extension. Um, nice setup, Dorothy. I know it's always a little tricky the first time um, figuring out how to get into that. I know sometimes the, um, like finding a stool, you know, one of those 18 inch stools um, that doesn't have a back on it, so the back doesn't get in the way, but but that obviously totally works as well. I just know that sometimes when you stand up, the band, you know, pulls on the chair, but I see that you totally MacGyvered it and you found that little, you know, like put the band through the hole and that was a really quick, um, that, that was perfect. Um, and nice work. Rotator cuff cardio, woohoo! I love getting that foot agility for the cognition, working on the cognition with those foot patterns and the breath, but also getting some endurance work in the shoulder rotator cuff. You guys are looking fantastic. So, 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 so impressed. I'm always impressed when, you know, someone new, a new hypoxia nut comes in and, you know, um, is totally killing it. So great, great, great job, Dorothy. Welcome, welcome to the hypoxix universe. <laughs> You'll see Nicole and Adele in here a lot. They really like getting into the Zoom room. So it's really exciting. Um, looking great, nice mechanics with the feet on the landing um, from that jump. It's boot time. I like to say balance a glass of water on your low back as you're kicking and today we're working in parallel um, with the back leg the reason for that is um you know we don't only want to work an external rotation or kick with the knee out because then sometimes we're overdoing the hip external rotation function so sometimes to isolate the glute keeping the leg in parallel with the kneecap pointing down is a really great way to optimize getting every single part of the glute working um, because remember when you activate one part of the muscle or one you know or one side of it a joint at times it can inhibit um, through reciprocal in inhibition, you know, just a fancy term for like, basically what I'm trying to say is work the joint at, at as many angles as you can within safe range. And so when you do this kickback, sometimes with a parallel leg, with the kneecap pointing down, sometimes externally rotated, depending upon what the goal is, but always, you know, changing it up. <clears throat> really nice work, you guys. You, you guys look fantastic and really nice fast transitions. Nicole, watch your right wrist when you're holding the weight. Make sure the wrist doesn't break here. Um, Adele has a really nice modification here um, to just avoid over gripping. Over the course of the week, um, she uses that really awesome um, CLX ther TheraBand with the loop on the end and just creates resistance there um, in that position. So that's, that's also a really nice option. Um, to get the lat activated and still work the back of the shoulder. Now, going back to those chair pistols, oh yeah. Um, really nice positioning with that band, Dorothy. Perfect. Um, getting the knee up at the top is just the, you know, the progression to get the strength in the psoas. Um, Nicole and Adele, perfect form in those. So exciting. Um, I know both of you have made so much progress in those um, pistol squats over the past year, so it's really very exciting. I like sometimes keeping the transitions in here. Sometimes I cut them out, but I like to keep them in sometimes because it's really helpful to see how people you know, are moving quickly through um, between each exercise and you know, to getting pieces of exercise equipment. Here, we're getting the lats as we get that foot agility again. Um, keeping the elbows at a 45 degree angle is always key here to optimize shoulder mechanics with that lat pull down. And you guys, we did it. Those smiling faces. I think I think we're done. <laughs> excellent, excellent work. That was a week seven um, level two, meaning that we're you know getting pretty intense with the movement, pretty intense with the breath work. As you see, it's fairly low impact, but we're getting that intensity of the breath. You can't hear the breath, but we're doing eight second exhalations in combination with anywhere between um, zero and even 10 beat breath retentions at the conclusion of that eight second exhalation. Um, so you guys are absolutely killing it. Um, I can't wait to see you at the next one for week eight and I can't wait to coach you guys through again you're doing amazing getting the breath getting the brain and getting the body please visit hypoxics.fitness to join the free community and hypoxics.studio to sign up for your membership so you can join these lab classes and I can cue you next time in the next video bye bye